What's up everyone, Lion Roar here, and it is time for a tier list update in Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. I'm going to regrade all of the heroes we've gotten up to this point and grade the new ones we've got as we close out 2023 and head towards 2024. But first, download Dungeon Hunter 6, a mobile free-to-play action RPG game where you play as a bounty hunter in a stunning dark fantasy open world. Play as a mage, warrior, assassin, monk, or zephyr. Customize your own weapons and summon companions to aid you in battle. Use the link in the description to start playing now on iOS or Android and see you hopefully soon. Alright, so just a quick tip for those of you who may have missed out on a companion. Uh, for one of the awesome heroes that we're going to grade today, you can go back and get the companion. So the events for the new champions are not just one and done. Let me show you. When you're on the main screen at the top where it says events, go ahead and click on that. And then once in a while, you'll see this companion gift exchange come around. This is your opportunity to either finish off getting the favorability you need for a companion or even start from scratch. Um, I do have to caution you, it's either going to take a lot of diamonds to get the value packs that you need for all the roses here, or um, if you are cheap to play or pay to win, you may be able to get those as well for this. But you are not left out. You are able to go get awesome ones that you haven't yet received. So let's get into the meat of this video, which is the grading. So first of all, I'm going to remind you about how I do my grading which again is just my opinion. I am one player in the game. People will have lots of different opinions. Don't just take mine. Talk to your guildmates. Talk to other people in the game. Uh, secondly, I'm going to update the old heroes. I am not going to cover all their specials or abilities or this video will be two hours long. Please go watch my other tier list if you want to know like what they do and how that's having an impact. Um, but I will cover the new heroes. I will add those to the tier list. And there are a lot of really great heroes that have been released in the last several months. It has entirely changed the meta. So now all the previous tier lists are obsolete and this is the one that really shows what playing Bloodline is like right now. So let's cover the grading. Just a reminder, S tier for me is God tier. These are the heroes if you wanna be the in the highest competition in the game, you have to have these heroes. Uh, a tier is uh, definitely heroes that can be in your main comp, um, but they typically are complementing the S tier heroes and making what they do work better. Um, B tier are heroes that may or may not be in the main comp. They're, they're usually like team two or team three types of heroes, um, and they can be a tier in certain respects or maybe even s tier if you can find a really good synergy but it's just when that particular ability is very niche and it's something for like pve or something like that now ct c tier heroes are a step down from that they are pretty much only useful in one or two scenarios for example maybe the districts they earn you a lot of cash but they don't fight well <laughs> So um, they might end up here or maybe they're really good against the boss, but terrible everywhere else, you know, something like that. Uh, then D tier is absolutely no use whatsoever in the game right now. You may be able to start when you're a brand new player with these heroes, uh, but you're going to find that they quickly get replaced. And then finally F tier. I only put heroes in F tier if they actively damage your team or cause problems if they're like bad to put in your roster. All right, so let's go through and uh, update some of these. Um, I am going to be moving a lot down because of some of the new heroes that we have, um, but let's start with the S tier and we have female Davala and that's one I get a lot of questions about. But I think since we uh, have Phoenix now and we have soul keepers that basically just undo what she does, it seems like almost every team has one of those. Um, so unfortunately, what she does best doesn't really work anymore, but she's still extremely powerful. And for any like team two or team threes that don't have those two heroes that just absolutely foil her, uh, she's still extremely difficult to deal with. So I will move her down to B tier because she can be really good in certain circumstances, but it's when there's not like a Phoenix or a Soul Keeper uh, on the board, a male Soul Keeper specifically. 
Okay, next up is Phoenix. I'm keeping her at S tier. She's fantastic. She's in like all the main comps. I don't know why you wouldn't play her. She does amazing damage in addition to just making sure to absolutely kill opponents when they get uh, below 15% health. Uh, female Ho, I am keeping at S tier. Um, however, I'm seeing a little bit less of her in main comps as some of the new heroes come out, but she's still up there with them and a great option. Bloom Uncounted Male. I am going to have to bump him down along with Female Devala to the B tier because of his nerf. And I think he's one that a lot of people who are still using him haven't noticed that he was nerfed, but they're probably wondering why they're losing more matches. Um, he's, what he does is still very good. He gets into the back row. Uh, he, he creates more champions, if you will, on the battlefield that you have to deal with. A really, 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 really highly vigored, and he must be really highly vigored, Bloom unc Uncounted Male still can sneak into the A and the S tier in certain situations, but for most people who don't have those resources, he's going to be B tier. Um, and then uh, we have Ash Main, who, when he first came out, and he was like still new when I created my last tier list video, I thought he was going to be amazing. In fact, my first play is with him, he was just like I expected. I thought he would be like a female Galabar or um, like a female choir type of toughness, but that he did more. However, in playing with him, man, every hero they've released since then has just passed him by. And I will tell you, people in my last tier list video did warn me that he probably wasn't as good as he looked and they were right. So unfortunately, I'm going to move him down to C tier. Because I just keep bumping him down further in my teams as new heroes come out. Now with the A tier, um, female Gultung, I'm going to move down to B tier. Because she's still amazing. It's just that she's been passed by by other heroes. Um, female Lionstone, still A tier. Absolutely. Still see her in a lot of main comps. Still see her in a lot of twos and threes and multiples of her and everything. Female Galabar moving up to S tier. The more I play with her, the more I vigor her, the better she gets. There's a secret about her. Um, she's sometimes like impossible to kill, which makes her really good for defense. And that used to be male Galabar's role. Um, and what you would want her for is the paralyze and the control effects. However, once you get her above about like 50 vigor, she becomes nearly impossible to kill. And so um, she's sort of taken on that male Galabar role or female choir type of role of just sticking around and not dying. And she has the paralyzing control effect. And I have her on my main comp. Um, and if you are pairing her with male water and sun, for example, um, she can be unstoppable. All right. Um, male ho, he's actually getting knocked down a tier. Still very, very, very good. Very good. Um, but some of these higher tier heroes are just able to beat him and he can't do much about it. Bloodstorm, I'm finding, is still an A. Uh, she's got control effects, which are great. She zips around the battlefield, gets to hard to reach heroes like the middle hero or the back heroes. Um, and she can, she can just do a lot of damage. So I'm still very happy with her in the A tier. Male Devala moving him down to C tier. Uh, Male Samir moving him down to C tier. And people are going to really complain about that one probably but he just looks like he does more on the battlefield than he actually does he's not actually doing as much as it looks he just pushes heroes around but he's not actually dealing a whole lot of damage or doing much to affect the outcome um i have had no problem fighting him um female trevain uh i'm gonna keep her in the b tier because of how good she is against bosses and she is just not relenting on that. Any PvE you need to get high damage, you're, you're going to have her. Female Ignis, unfortunately, for how amazing she is. And if you're a new player, she's still like A tier for you. But I have to move her down to C tier. She's just not seeing much uh, use. Um, male Aeson, I think actually in this day and age, it used to be the female Ignis was better. I think male Aeson's a little bit better because of how he damages everything on the battlefield and that's just really good for events that have waves of opponents um but i'm gonna have to move him to c tier as well uh fulgur male same thing same reason 
Mel Asan. I mean, they're they're not far apart from each other at this point. Some of the original heroes that do that big area of effect damage. Um, Tide Storm Mail, um, great for shooting out the back line, um, but you know it isn't holding up quite as well. Um, I think uh, Mail White Eye has just unfortunately there's been a number of effects have come out that are like his and they're all just better than him. So I'm going to move him to D tier. Um, we have female choir discordant. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I missed male gold tongue here. Uh, male gold tongue. Uh, I'm going to move to a C tier because his thing he's really good at is staying alive. So he's a really good defensive hero. He just, unfortunately, since he's only targeting one hero and I don't think he does quite enough damage fast enough. Um, is only going to be good on like maybe a third team or like a fourth team if you want to take him against like the expedition boss. Um, female choir discordant leaving at B tier. Uh, she's just tough to kill. Um, and she has a big impact on the board and a lot of opponents target her and you can suck them up and bunch them together. Um, uh, male Selfos um, leaving here at uh, B tier. And um, he just does a lot of damage. And also the trait is very good paired with Male Water and Sun. Um, that trait allows the Male Water and Sun to actually go off faster. So having said that, I just realized I missed over the, <laughs> this uh, female Selfos and just skipped her. Um, I'm leaving her at A as well. I didn't mention, but I did leave her there. And, and that is because the more I play with her, also just like female Galibur, the better she gets. I mean, the more you level her up and vigor her, um, the more damage she does. And she does a lot. Of damage I mean like a surprising amount of damage and not only that but makes uh, the rest of the team do more damage uh, so so that's good and she has a good trait that affects male water and Sun in a positive way it makes him go off quicker um, so that's why she's staying at a tier there uh, she's a very similar uh, hero to female Lionstone by the way um, especially in sales and sabers where you can only have one female Lionstone in a wave and then if you want a similar type effect, I know she, female selfless doesn't speed heroes up, but does give that increased attack, which is nice. So um, you can kind of have like two different teams that have similar effects. So that's why she's staying at A tier. All right, female stone thrower. I'll go ahead and leave at B. Um, she's very good, but she just isn't better than some of the heroes that are going to be ahead of her. Um, so if if you are a cheap to play or free to play player and you have her and you don't have some of the S and A tier heroes, she's really good because she does controlling effects and she's got an amazing trait um, that just speeds your whole team up. Extremely valuable, way more valuable of a trait than agile. Um, okay, uh, moving on from there, let's uh, look at some of the previously leveled C tier he heroes and see if we need to move, move them down. Um, male Doombringer, we're going to leave here because of districts. He's a terrible fighter, but he does well in the districts. Um, and also male Griffin does that. Female Griffin, I'm going to move her down to D tier because she is a terrible fighter. And she's been passed by in the districts by a number of heroes. So that's why I'm doing that. Um, female Draw Paul, who I'm just so disappointed by because... <laughs> I, I used to have her much more highly ranked. I am going to have to move down to the D tier uh, because we've got a spate of new warriors that are just better than her. Um, okay, here, here goes a lot of heroes moving down to D tier. Sally Horn, male. I'm not even going to spend a lot of time talking about why I'm doing this. Um, it's just they're not used much. Male, Yvonne, I'll leave at C tier. Uh, Ugrel, female. I'll leave at C, C tier because she's good for new players. Um, Doombringer female, good in districts, good for new players. I'll leave it C tier for that. Uh, female Fulgur's fine there. Lionstone male, good for new players. Um, Tidestorm female. I'm just going to move her down. If you're going to use a Tidestorm, do the male. Um, White Eye female, hardly useful. Um, Samir female, never used. Um, Luxuriant female, I'll leave it C tier because, especially with newer players or cheap to play players, her effect of charming opponents is extremely powerful. Uh, but in later stages of the game, she just delays the inevitable. Um, Lume male. I mean, so unfortunately, so many of these heroes are just becoming obsolete. Female Oros doesn't work like she's supposed to, even though she has good effects. 
Uh, do I want to move her down to D? I don't think she's completely useless at this point. I'll leave her up in C tier, actually. Uh, Galabar Male. He has a really strong effect at staying alive, but he's pretty much only good for defense in PvP. Uh, he's not great on offense because he just runs out the clock, and you lose if you run out the clock on offense. But you don't know on defense. You can actually sneak some wins that way. Blue Monk Kind of Nude Female. Um, she's still fine at C tier. Choir Discord Male, fine at C tier. Warbringers. He, there was an argument to be made in the last tier list. He probably should have been B tier, but I thought he was C tier. And I still think he's C tier because he's good at PVE. That's what he's good at. But we have some better PVE heroes now. Um, Warbringers Female, moving her down to D tier. Uh, Stone Thrower Male, D tier. We're just cleaning some of these out. Um, and then uh, you got some other uh, heroes here that we already talked about. All right, D tier, obviously D tier. They haven't gotten worse. Like, they don't actively hurt your team. So I'm not moving them down to F tier. Now let's take a look at some of these new ones. Male Water and Sun. He's the S of the S tier. <laughs> he is number one. Do I even need to talk about him? He does everything. Tons of waves of damage. Tons of waves of health. Keeps your team alive. Extremely highly vigored. Really hard to deal with. Uh, they have been trying to solve him as a problem in the meta for a while now. Um, he's the first hero that came out after my last tier list, and he's just shaped the whole game. Um, if you can get him, you'll want him. He's going to be good for a long time more, unless they go and nerf him, which they have refused to do. They've just been trying to release new heroes to deal with him. Male Water and Sun just totally overshadows female Water and Sun, but she's actually quite good. So I'm putting her in A tier. She's just not as good as him because he does damage and healing and she's primarily just a healer. So if you need a healer on your team and you've got lots of other damage dealers, sure, you can uh, go ahead and use her. She's going on maybe like a, a two or three uh, team. Um, Male Sigaric, I'm going to put in the A tier. He's fantastic in PvP and in PvE. In fact, like my heart kind of wants to put him in S tier. The only problem is in PvP, I just can't seem to find a way to main comp him. Um, even though he's such a good hero, he could be main comp. Um, but he is just amazing in PvP at going into the back line and dealing a ton of damage to take out some of the most difficult to deal with heroes in the game. And then even better in PvE against bosses. Uh, female Sigaric, I mean, she's okay. I'll put her at C tier only because the male outshines her. Um, but she does a good job in PvP at making it into the back line. She's nowhere near as good in PvE. Um, Dawnbreaker male. You know, these Dawnbreakers, they're good. Um, well, at least the male is good. Uh, but just not better than anything that's currently out. Female, I actually don't think is good. I, I know somebody will probably... Tell me about some synergy they found in the comments, and that's perfectly fine. Please tell me if you disagree with me. I don't care. I, I like comments like that. It makes me smarter and better as a player, too, and everybody else. So you're free to comment as much as you want about what I'm saying here. Um, but the Dawnbreaker female special just confuses me, and I don't know what she's doing, and she's certainly not having an impact on the board. So that's that. All right, the Tide Raisers. Both Tide Raisers are good. I'm going to put the male in B tier because um, he he's good at dealing damage, but that's primarily what his role is. It's the female that's really good. She's another one like male Sigaric. My heart actually just wants to put her in S tier, and I just can't quite get her there because i don't think everybody needs to main comp her she's not like a meta changing hero like some of these that i've put up in the s tier um but she's almost there and i feel really bad that i missed out on her i just didn't summon for those and i wish i had and that's one that i'm gonna have to go back into the companion exchange and get at some point um because i do want her and i think i could fit her in my main comp or at least my number two um all right, and, and here's why, by the way, I'll just, I should mention, um, she just does these waves of damage, she moves the board around, and 
she has control effects, which works really well with the male water and sun. So a PVP all-star, maybe not quite as good at, at PVE, but PVP absolutely top tier. Let's go with the male soul keeper. And this one is controversial. I know there's going to be arguments about this in the comments. I'm going to put him at A tier as well, because he's another one that the more highly I vigor him and level him, the better he is. And I said that in my video whenever they were released. He absolutely just needs to be one of the most powerful heroes on the board as far as your vigor and leveling goes to be useful. And that's because you need that damage bar at which he's just going to execute opponents to be high. And when he is, I am seeing him on some players' main comps. Uh, he is that powerful that if you get that up there, you can do that. But you know where he really shines? is on the um, second and third teams where he's the most highly leveled champion because other people in like Valley of Conquerors and Guild Conquest and in the arena, perhaps um, if you want to be sneaky, uh, they will underestimate a team that has lower power and then he's in there as the most powerful hero and um, he goes off and then just executes the whole other team. At the highest levels of competition, I am seeing him more and more in top main comps as like that finisher role um i am seeing him replace phoenix from time to time although i still have phoenix s tier cut because of the damage she does and the execution effect um i i feel like you're wasting both of them if you put them on the same team together but i have seen some people do that i like male soul keeper for my second team right now um or sometimes my third, it just depends on the synergy that I'm trying to put together. But I like doing that because it gives me execution effects on multiple teams for things like sales and savers where you can only use them once. Okay, next up, Soul Keeper's female. Um, she, doesn't, she doesn't do much and she got totally overshadowed by the male, but she's good as are all the heroes that they've just released. Um, and now we come on to the Thunderlords. Uh, there's a debate between these two as well. Because they both have stunning effects which are good with male, water, and sun. They do a lot of damage. They, in fact, they just do a lot of things. So I'm going to put them both at A tier. And I tend to favor the female. But man, there are some people that insist the male is better. And I do see the male show up um, in a lot of main comps. Maybe not as frequently as some of the others that are in A tier. But that's because some people went with the male. Some went with the female. And so their attention sort of got split between the two and I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one um, but let me know in the comments what you think share with other people which do you think is better between the male or the female they're both a's um, all right crooked fins i am so disappointed by these two i had such high hopes in fact they built this one up <laughs> leading into them people were so excited about them these were like cult favorites coming in to them because we were going to get the sharks and um you know, unfortunately, I think the way that the male's special works, uh, it's just sort of self-defeating. Um, but it's powerful. He's a glass cannon. And I I think that he can do some things in the very, very, very right situation, but you have to work hard for it. Otherwise, he doesn't actively hurt his team. I just think he doesn't do enough. And I don't think he's useful at all. So I put him in D tier. Now the female, I'm going to put in C tier because she's pretty good in PVP at being able to take out an opponent for a little while so that it's five on four. Um, but it just doesn't seem to have a big enough impact. And she's actively bad at PVE against bosses because she swallows up the opponent and I tested it. And then the rest of your heroes aren't able to do damage. They just stand around looking at her while she has eaten the, <laughs> the boss. And that's not good. You do less damage that way. That's bad. Don't ever use her for PvE. Okay. Askavarge. These are kind of cult favorites too. And in the very, very right situation, they're very, very good. But they have to be paired with other heroes that make them good. So for that reason... Um, I'm going to put the male at B, who seems to do a lot more than the female, who I'm going to put at C. Um, and and yes, people have found very good uses for B, but I think that would be like a Team 2 or Team 3 hero where the whole team has kind of been built around what they do. 
Um, the Elmat clan that just came out, I thought they were going to be good. Um, unlike the Crooked Fins, which are warriors that I really was hoping were going to be good and weren't, the Elmats are actually good. Very good. So good that you might actually want to consider changing your guardian stones around for these two. Let's start with, um, you know what I just noticed? <laughs> I'll fix this in my tier list, but this is supposed to say uh, Almat male. All right, just look at the picture, Almat male. Um, I am going to put him in the A tier because he is particularly good at PVE um, against bosses, raid bosses, uh, expeditions, uh, any of the events that have big bosses, he does a ton of damage. He's up there with like male cigaric and individual damage he can do to bosses. Um, in fact, he rivals my male water and sun uh, against bosses, which is amazing because I haven't even vigored him up that much. Um, but he's also good in PvP. He is way better in PvE, but he is very good in PvP as well. Um, just being able to, like when I look at the damage dealt in those, he is just a pure damage dealer. He's on the board just wrecking opponents. Um, uh, Almat Female is also an A, and it depends on what you need them for. She's the PvP all-star. Uh, and like good against PvE too, but probably not better than, you know, the limited options you really want to take against PvE, but PvP. She kind of reminds me of Female Ho in that when Female Ho first came out, I think people overlooked her. Um, I don't think people are overlooking Almat, by the way, but people overlooked the Female Ho because it didn't look like she was doing much. Like um, you would look at the damage she dealt and it just wasn't a whole lot, uh, but you just won more. She was doing so much as far as control and preventing damage and healing and things like that. Uh, she, this Female Almat's kind of the same way. So she um, comes onto the board, doesn't look like she's doing a lot of damage, but she's doing so many little controlling things uh, that the rest of your heroes are really able to do what they're meant to do. Um, so yes, they are both A's right now. Um, it remains to be seen. I think there's the potential for either of them, but probably more so the female to go into S tier if she really has that kind of impact. But I just because the warriors are not something that people are really focused on, especially in guardian stone. Um, I have to leave them at A's for now, but we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Now the, the final bloodstorm champions, um, that we've gotten through the last couple months, wood scourge, uh, people hate wood scourge. They spend a lot of resources on her and they just feel like she's too fragile and she doesn't do enough. I think I like wood scourge more, th more than most people. So this is just purely my opinion, but I'm going to put her at B tier because she does a lot of damage. And because she's a Bloodstorm, you don't even have to spend resources leveling her up. You just have to pair her with a 700 level hero and she's fully maxed. That is a big strength of the Bloodstorms. They all get a little bump in my opinion because of that. Um, but she's got controlling aspects. Uh, you know, if you use the synergies right, you can... Um, create situations where she's really maximized, but she's certainly not A or S tier. Now, Zeistin, I do think is A tier, and that's because he complements male water and sun really well and some of the other top tier heroes. Um, like in that, uh, in, in my main comp, I have a female Galabar, uh, and that's because she's this big tanky hero that really controls things on the board, letting male water and sun do what he does. I think Zeistin could fill that spot. Um, other ones that people have in that spot are uh, like Tide Razor Female, for example. I think, you know, that spot could be taken by either of these three heroes at this point. Even, even the Thunder Lords. And I just noticed I <laughs> listed the Thunder Lords um, uh, as both male too. But you can see by their pictures what I mean. Zeistin, like taunts heroes. He's huge. He's hard to kill. He actually does a lot of damage. He's everything um, that uh, uh, Ashbane was supposed to be, in my opinion. Um, so uh, I can't put him at S tier. I don't think he's just overtaking the board and changing the meta. But I think he's really complementing what those S tier heroes do. So those are my thoughts. We didn't get any F tier heroes uh, since the last release. 
Um, here's where we're at today, and a lot of this is my opinion, so share with me what you think in the comments below. And as we get new heroes, feel free to come back and comment on this video and let us know where you think they're going to slot in. If you enjoy videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification, and I will catch you in the next one.